we extend a warm welcome to all who may be visiting today. If you are looking for a parish community, we would be happy to have you become part of our parish family. Please check that your cell phones are off as we are about to begin Holy Mass with hymn number 311 as we gather at your table. That's number 311. Please stand. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us Christ, your deep compassion, to forgive as you forgive. May we still behold your image in the world you died to save. Gracious Spirit, help us summon other guests to share that feast. Where triumphant love will welcome those who had been lost and least. There no more will envy blind us, nor will pride our peace destroy. As we join with saints and angels to repeat the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, it is the Lord Jesus himself, unto the appearances of bread and wine that enters into our lives and counts on us to then bring that presence within to all those around. He comes to give and he comes to take away, to take away anything that would hinder us from embracing him and from living that witness with joy. Let us acknowledge our need for such healing love. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament and you strengthen us in holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things, which no eye can see, 
Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the height out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, Come, eat of my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts. Give thanks always and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
drinks my blood remains in me. And I in him is as the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Conveniently, on these warm summer weekends, we've been reading selections from the sixth chapter of John on the bread of life. One homily could sum it all up, but it would be lengthy. And so, over these weeks, we've been re looking at this central gift of our faith, the gift of Jesus' own body and blood in the Holy Eucharist, but looking at it from different perspectives. Less time consuming, but hopefully, with less words and concepts, more easily grasped and then responded to. It's one thing to hear the word of God proclaimed and preached, but we are called to then in flesh. That's what it means to be Christian, isn't it? We don't just talk words. God the Father's word became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus the Christ. And Jesus tells his hearers that this bread and this wine is my flesh and is my blood. And so scandalous was that that many walked away. Deacon Jim shared last weekend disturbing statistics about how many people who call themselves Catholics who come forward to receive the Eucharist, then when asked in a poll what it is they receive, they say, well, it's a way of remembering Jesus. Well, one young girl one time was overheard saying, some people said, oh, you're Catholic. Oh, you people like eat the body and blood of Jesus. That's gross. And she said, well, it isn't like it's the real body and blood. It's a symbol. No, it isn't. You tell our sweetheart we don't eat fingers and Jesus isn't proposing cannibalism, but he didn't just give us a piece of bread and give us a cup of wine and say, remember me, this is it. No, the idea of Jewish remembrance is to remember, is to make present. And while, as St. Thomas Aquinas tells us, the accidents remain, what appears remains, the substance is completely changed. Faith will tell us Christ is present when our human senses fail. We grasp for no one. We open ourselves to no one less, to nothing less than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when we come to Holy Communion. That precious blood that we drink from the chalice is that same precious blood that flowed from his hands and his side, that we might have salvation. But today we're reminded in this last selection from the sixth chapter of John that not only is the Eucharist our food for this journey, our strength for this journey, but it is the pledge of future glory. You heard in the book of Wisdom, Wisdom sets herself a feast. Come share my banquet, this great food, this great wine. Whenever in the scriptures you hear about banquets, a light should go on. They're talking about heaven. They're talking about eternity. A banquet where we're satiated, where we... We love what we're tasting, where there's the being fed not only by the food, but by the atmosphere, by the people. And we take that and say that's a poor, poor, light, simple little shadow. A poor example as compared to what the fullness of the heavenly banquet will be. Every time you and I receive the Eucharist, which the Second Vatican Council described as the source and summit of the life of the church, we are reminded that we're bound for glory. 
the source of the life of the church. In other words, how can we go out there and witness to Christ? How can we serve his people? How can we go beyond our moods? How can we go beyond our prejudices? How can we help rather than judge? Only through Christ. Only through becoming who we receive in the Eucharist. How can we allow ourselves to be broken and shared when it isn't about being recognized or applauded or thanked? Only through Jesus when we receive him in the Eucharist. He is the source. The Eucharist is the source of the life of the church. It's where we get it from. In a real way, sacramentally, when we come to communion, we receive what had happened with Mary. And our response is supposed to be like Mary's. We had it in the Gospel of the Feast of the Assumption this morning. That as she receives the newly conceived Christ within her womb, what's her response? When we receive the Lord in the Eucharist, what's to be our response? She doesn't sit there and contemplate Jesus in her and then move on with life as normal. She takes that and we're told she goes into the hill country. She visits her cousin Elizabeth who's pregnant and who needs help. She carries the Christ within her. Elizabeth rejoices in that, but it isn't just a spiritual meeting. It's a spiritual reality that is translated into loving service. She goes and meets the needs. And isn't that what we're called to in the Eucharist? Isn't that why we receive the Eucharist? It's the source of having that strength, of having that gift, and then being sent forth, not to the hill country, to Elizabeth, to our families, our neighborhoods, where we work, carrying the Christ that we have received in our words and in our attitudes, in our willingness to put others first. And insofar as we do that, we point to a kingdom that's not of this world. We begin to, rec to witness by our simple example that there is something more than just what we see. There is a reason to reach out, not just when we're being paid for it or asked to or obligated to, but to do it purely because we realize that we trust this Lord who revealed to us that we touch him when we touch the lives of one another. It's hard to do. But the only way we have truly received communion worthily is not when it simply stops with the reverence, but then when it motivates us into response. That the words, body of Christ, blood of Christ, become flesh when we take it in ourselves and become that food for the world. As we move through and as we do our part and sometimes experience the frustration of not doing all that we would like to and not having it turn out our way, we never lose sight of the fact that the Eucharist is the summit of our life. That the one who comes within us is the one who eventually will bring us face to face with himself in that eternal kingdom. It puts all of the things in perspective. It makes us want to bring others with us. I remember a story of a young man who was, grew up in a parish in Philadelphia. And as he was growing up, he tried to do a lot of good things for people and kind things. And he was just kind of an outstanding kid. And a lot of people kept telling him, you should be a priest, you should be a priest. Because they think, oh, well, priests do kind things. Nuns do kind things. The rest of us are off the hook. No. <laughs> Vatican II said, the call to holiness comes from baptism, not ordination or consecration to religious life. Those vocations all come, whether it's marriage or single life or priesthood, they all flow from the essential one. The call to holiness comes from our baptism. Well, anyway, everybody kept saying that to him, and it kind of drove him crazy until he was in his senior year of high school. And the only person who never said it was his pastor, who was an older man. And one day they were getting ready to come out and serve mass. And the pastor said to him, so, Jeremy, you're graduating. Where, where are you going from there? And so he talked about which college he wanted to go to. He goes, okay, and then what do you want to do? Then what? He said, well, I, I don't know, I guess... Hope I do well and graduate. And then what? Well, then 
I want to get a good job and so I can support myself. And, if I, and then what? Well, I guess I hope I meet somebody and get married. And, and then what? Well, I hope we have some kids. And I don't know. And then what? And he said, I don't know. We provide for them. They turn out good. We send them to college. And then what? I guess I'll retire at some point. And then what? Then I'll die and go to heaven. I guess. And the Monsignor turned around and said, and who would you want to take with you? And they walked out the door to begin Mass. He ended up becoming a priest because the answer in his heart was, I want to take everybody I meet with me. I don't want to go there alone. Well, yeah, that's kind of tops on the list of job descriptions of people such as I. But it's within the pay scale of everybody in this church. And it's the call of baptism. And it's why we receive the Eucharist to be reminded that we don't just need strength for now, that we're bound for glory. And so we're sent out into this week, receiving Christ to take Christ. Who will we take him to? I guess it'll depend who we want to take with us to heaven. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, let us bring ourselves, let us bring our needs to a loving and generous God. For the church in her mission to bring healing and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the transformation of our culture and the renewal of our nation as one under God's authority, obedient to his laws and seeking to be bearers of his peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in military service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with addictions or who are caught up in escapism through abandonment to their passions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewed appreciation of the greatest gift we have in the most holy Eucharist, the gift of the precious body and blood of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal joy in the kingdom, for all who shared in the bread of life as they lived among us, especially Helena Nyland, for whom this holy mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of one another, we pray to the Lord. All this we ask, gracious God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join together in singing number 583, Worthy is the Lamb. That's number 583. the land that 
that was slain to receive honor and glory. Worthy are the ones who believe to receive the goodness of God. Worthy are you and strength belong now to you. You lay down your life and died upon the cross. We become a people of hope. Worthy is the Lamb that was Brethren, my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and the glory of his name, our good and good of all his nature. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. So with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Oh, holy, oh, holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Comes in the name. 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, form a divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
As you're leaving church today, Joe Mitchell will be outside on the plaza with some 2020 club tickets if you'd like to get one. Also, next weekend, you'll notice there's a full column in the bulletin about the rite of sending. At each liturgy, we will be praying with and for our seminarian Joe as he prepares to leave and to begin formation for the priesthood at St. John's Seminary in Brighton. Joe will be leaving a week from this Wednesday. And so next weekend at each Mass, we have a celebration of the rite of sending the particular solemn celebration will be at the 10.30 Mass next Sunday, and we'll be looking forward at that Mass to welcoming uh, Joe's parents, who for many years were active members of the parish here in Portsmouth. Uh, they're coming back from Indiana for uh, homecoming and to be here to support Joe on that day. So we look forward to welcoming um, his brother, his parents, and members of his family. And again, that will be at the 10.30 solemn Mass next Sunday. All the other information is in the bulletin. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ of these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join together in singing number 717, All Praise and Glad Thanksgiving. Again, that's number 717. All praise. 
praise and glad thanksgiving to God the Father be, the font of all things living, who reigns eternally. Praise to God forever be, one in life in persons three, mighty God, saving God, God eternal Trinity. Christ Jesus, we adore you, the Son of God most high. With thanks we sing before you, who came for us to die. God forever be one in life in persons three mighty God saving God God eternal Trinity O Holy Spirit blessing to you who reign above your wondrous gifts of the church sings forth your